Euthanasia pros and cons. Pros. One, it provides a way to relieve extreme pain. Cons. One, euthanasia devalues human life. Pros. Two, it provides a way of relief when a person's quality of life is low. Cons. Two, physician and other medical care people should not be involved in directly causing death. Pros. Three, freeze up medical funds to help other people. Cons. Three, families should hospitalize and do their best for the patient. Pros. Four, it is another case of freedom of choice. Cons. Four, euthanasia is a murder. Pros. Five, only rich people can afford euthanasia. Cons, five, euthanasia is against the Hippocratic Oath. Amen. Praise God, for he is worthy. Here lately, you know, we've been discussing some controversial problems or situations that we have faced today. And today is no exception because our theme is what does the Bible say about euthanasia? Euthanasia. What is euthanasia? Euthanasia is an act or a mission in the context of sickness or disability that intentionally causes death. As such, it has become a topic of contemporary debate but it is nothing new. The killing and abandonment of the sick and elderly have been common practice in cultures around the globe and one of the most powerful impacts of the gospel have been to defend the defenseless and to devalue those without economic, economic benefits to society. And also, we are thinking about the Obama health care practices today, which many are against, because it is causing financial woes to many people. Should all Americans have health insurance? I think so. And I think Americans should go to the doctor to find out about their health. Because that's the only way a person will find out whether or not they have a chronic illness or not, such as diabetes. I remember a five-year-old boy who his mother said was diagnosed with borderline diabetes but yet and still she wasn't taking him to the doctor um, periodically to check on it and she wasn't checking his blood levels on a daily basis to find out whether or not um, his glucose level was high or low. And I felt that was kind of strange. Again, when it comes to people and health care policy, I truly believe the medical professionals need to get more involved. When it comes to religion and euthanasia, the Buddhist is less clear. Islam is against. Hinduism, they don't allow it. Sikhs are against. And we do understand that many Christians are against euthanasia, death via suicide. In the Greco-Roman world of the early church, euthanasia was common 
and widely approved. The powerful pagan protest against physicians who had taken the Hippocratic Oath recruiting euthanasia and assisted suicide came in a content to which euthanasia could be an appealing option in the face of chronic disease or uncontrollable pain. Also today, there is a question about whether or not politicians in the future would allow the killings of the elderly. As we know, many elderly are on medication and these medications are very expensive and yet without them, they would die. So we're wondering whether or not the enemy has a plan to use chronic illness as a method of assisting suicide. You never know. What is remarkable about the resurgence of interest in the primitive approach to sickness and suffering in our own day is that we now have far greater medical and other resources with which to cope with these challenges. It is perhaps the shortest indicator that our understanding of human nature is being reinvented as the culture turns its back on its Judo-Christian roots. The starting point for a biblical understanding of human nature is the idea that human beings are made in the image of God. It is clear from Genesis 1, 26-27 that this applies to all members of human species. Homo sapiens is distinguished from all other kinds by our bearing the likeness of our maker. The imago del image of God is what makes us the being we are and it is in place wherever there are members of our species. This godly image plainly applies to those who are sick and disabled as well as those in the flower of human giftedness. Those with severe mental impairments, including the so-called persistent vegetative state, remain full members of the human species and therefore bear God's image. And this goes along with today, we have higher technology that can detect a deformity of a baby in utero and for parents to be advised that they need to abort the child. But again, what we're saying today is since that child is created in the image of God, that child has the right to live. Amen. A definition of euthanasia that focuses on the intent to cause death is important and in principle it distinguishes euthanasia from health care decisions affecting terminal patients when there is no intent to end life. The term physician assistant suicide has been coined to promote voluntary euthanasia, but it is misleading. Voluntary euthanasia does entail a suicidal motive, and suicide is a sad but immoral case of homicide, the homicide of the self. But euthanasia always involves 
a homicide on the part of the physician, whether it comes through the prescription of lethal drug or another method. And if it is legal, it involves a community policy decision which states that such lives are not worth living, as in the case of Michael Jackson's physician, who is presently serving time for giving him a lethal injection or assisting him to take the lethal injection that caused his demise. Amen? A distinction is often made between active and passive euthanasia, but this distinction can be misleading. If the intent is to bring about death, the moral accounting is the same. A more useful distinction lies among voluntary, involuntary, and non-voluntary euthanasia. Voluntary euthanasia is the public policy goal of some activists and intellectuals who deny that they favor involuntary killing. Yet, there are problems in defining adequate consent in the case of the seriously ill. For example, even some who favor voluntary euthanasia would consider Dr. Jack Kavoki as a serial killer, since even though he secured consent, he preyed on the fear of lonely people. Moreover, there is the problem of non-voluntary killing. The euthanasia of those who are not competent, such as Alzheimer's patients or infants, who constitutes some of the prime candidates for an induced death. The biblical doctrine of the sanctity of life of those in God's image offer a fundamental protection for patients, aging relatives, the handicapped, and the poor by ruling out the option of acting to bring about death. Job, in the Old Testament, great example of suffering and faithfulness, was challenged by his wife to take the youth in Asia option. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. Job 2 and 9. But he maintained his integrity and proclaimed in response, Should we accept only good from God and not adversity? Job 2 and 10. On the other hand, some people consider youth in Asia as death with dignity. Father, we thank you for this lesson on today. Give your people understanding and we thank you for the peace in Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen.